Welcome back to Case Closed with John Swallow. John has worked in both the private and public sector, first as a lawyer for a multinational company and then as the Attorney General of the state of Utah. Even more powerfully, he defended himself against false charges and beat the government to clear his name. Here's Attorney, Attorney General John Swallow. John, thanks for being on the podcast again today. It's great to be with you, Cole. Thanks. My John, pleasure. We are so happy um, to be able to talk with you today. And this subject um, has kind of, it's kind of a guilty subject for me because I just barely saw this new film. It's called The Batman. For those of you who haven't seen it, it is an amazing film and it talks about, um, it kind of just shows the lights and darknesses of, of kind of humanity. But one of the themes in this movie and you don't even have to see the movie to kind of understand this, but it is all about kind of justice. And today I kind of wanted to pick John's brain on what justice means to him, what is kind of his definition, what does it look like in his life, how has it, how has it affected everything in his job. So John, real quick, what is, what is the defini definition of justice to you? Well, that's, that's a, that's a really a broad question because um, it, it means so much on so many levels, um, social justice, criminal justice, civil justice. Uh, I'm an attorney, right? I'm a former attorney general. <laughs> Before that, I was chief deputy attorney general on the civil side of the state of Utah, ran basically the, the uh, law firm of the state of Utah and saw justice uh, being served and not being served uh, in multiple different ways. Um, justice to me is, is, is really fairness it's it's about a society that is built upon the rule of law and holding people accountable to those laws so that society can function predictably safely so we don't have people breaking windows and burning cars and slashing tires and in and pillaging raping etc cetera, etc cetera, right um, and then and then finding a way to really discover who's innocent and who's guilty who's falsely charged and who's appropriately charged, and then making sure that the proper consequences is meted to those people. On the civil side, it's, it's about honoring contracts and, and if someone does something to injure a person, either negligently or intentionally, making sure that they're held accountable for that and that people are educated enough and represented well enough uh, that they can and actually receive the benefit of what they expected when they, when they drove down the street and they stopped at the stoplight and then moved forward on green and then got hit broadside when someone else ran the red light. And that happened to my family. It, it's, it's, it's interesting. Years ago, um, I was away in Las Vegas on a business trip and I'd just gotten to my hotel room when my phone rang. And so this is in the afternoon and a person identified himself as a law enforcement officer from my hometown and said, Mr. Swallow, yes, um, I'm standing in your living room using your telephone because your family has just been in a terrible crash, head-on collision, and your wife has been injured and she's on her way to the hospital. Your kids are fine, uh, but she broke her arm and, and she's heading to the hospital. thought you'd want to know, and I'm, I'm just you know, going crazy. There in another city, rushed to the airport, barely get back in time to help my wife through her surgery, right? And she's fully healthy now and everything's fine. But the point is, is that we had an injury that was caused by someone else who ran through a stoplight. And we were able to, because of my experience as an attorney, we were able to work through that in a way that compensated my wife for her injury and our family for her injury. Um, and, and, and we felt like civil justice was found in that. So justice is not just about criminal justice. And I have a lot of experience with that as a former attorney general, right? Um, civil justice, and I've spent a lot of my career as a private civil attorney, right, before I started working for the state and was elected to be attorney general. Um, and then just general justice in, in general, where we can expect as a society to have others follow the law so our society can be organized, so we can preserve our rights and our freedoms, which is very, very important. It's a core belief of mine that, that our country was established to protect us from people who would take things from us unjustly. So justice is fairness, and it's a society that operates in a way that's predictable based on the laws that we have, and the government stands there, or the court system is there to enforce those laws. 
so that we have fairness or justice. Was that a long answer for a simple question? <laughs> I love it. I love how it just really boils down to justice equals fairness. I love, I love that. And I feel like there are so, in so many cases that we need to find justice or fairness when, um, when we're wronged in some way. And that can be, just like you said, across so many different platforms, like criminal, like personal, all these different things. Um, what happens when, because of course, just like everything in the world, the justice system isn't perfect. What happens, or have you seen any cases where justice wasn't fair and then maybe how it was fixed or how, like, maybe in your perspective, maybe how we turned around and made a situation just again? Right, um, great question. Um, so justice per se isn't always about the final result. So there are people who have served in this country on when I say served, who have spent time on death row, which means they've been convicted by a jury or pled guilty. Um, they have been placed on death row, meaning that they're going to be executed under the laws of their own state, who later on have been found by a court to have been factually innocent, meaning that they didn't do it by a judge post-conviction. And so the justice process isn't always about the end result, but the process along the way. And so, and so justice can be withheld uh, on the charging side. If there's, a, if there's a fraudulent or falsely or overly aggressive investigation, uh, it, can, it can be done on, it can be found, injustice can be found on the prosecution side where the prosecution decides for some contaminated reason whether it's racial prejudice or political prejudice or election, I call it election prejudice. It's, it's where you wanna get elected so you wanna make a statement that you're tough on crime and so maybe you overcharge people just so you get a reputation and, and then you can use that in your campaign to more easily be reelected because it's easy to run on the, on the moniker, I'm tough on crime, right? No one wants to elect someone who's perceived to be soft on crime, right? So there are contaminants that can happen along the process. There, there are ways to charge the wrong person, to knowingly charge the wrong person, and then to have that person go through this terrible process and be acquitted by a jury, or to even be a, a, a convicted while, while they're still innocent. And so that all has an impact on justice all along the way. Um, so the question has to be, how do we take steps as a society to ensure as much as possible that the process all along is just. And, and I know that in my own case where uh, politicians basically put together a plan to, to falsely accuse me of things that I hadn't done, could never have possibly done, it compelled me to, to defend myself. And thanks to our process, our, our criminal justice process and the jury process and the right to a jury trial, I was able to defend myself and prevail against the government. And you know, it didn't hurt that the government wrote me a big check when it was all done, but <laughs> justice was ultimately served in my case, uh, but it isn't always served that way. And it, and, and it can be abused all along the process. Perfect, and you repeated, repeated kind of a phrase, justice being served. And for those of you that may not like know exactly what that means. I mean, we hear it a lot like in media, we hear it a lot in just maybe in anything, like people just say like justice is gonna be served. What exactly does that mean? Well, um, I, I believe people expect that if there is a law that's broken, um, it, especially when it's intentionally broken, like I think we all know that you can't break into someone's house and take something that's not yours that you shouldn't harm someone physically, like, you know, um, unless you're defending yourself and ne it's necessary to pr protect yourself. I think people intuitively know that. And so when society sees um, a, a rapist, or hears about a rapist, or sees child abuse, or, or sex trafficking, or white collar crime when someone has bilked and misappropriated hundreds of thousands of dollars from an employer or, or someone, People want to feel like there's a consequence for that. And you know, in law school, they spend a lot of time talking about the various philosophies of 
the punishment side of our criminal justice system? Is it, is it to bring restitution back to the victim? Is it to send a message to would-be perpetrators that they shouldn't do it because it's going to hurt if they get caught and if they get convicted, right? Um, are, are there other reasons for a criminal justice system, system in society? Is it so that, so that society can be confident that they can walk down the street at night and feel fairly safe, right? And the answer is all of the above. Our justice system is designed to help our society exist in a way that's predictable so that people can sleep at night, re rest reasonably assured that their assets are safe, and that if they aren't, that they can call someone, someone will intervene and restore them and then make the community safe once again. I think that's the, the expectation that people have. And, and not only is it something that we should have as an expectation, but it really helps with an ordered society and everybody benefits from an ordered society. Um, and you can just imagine what it's like when there's not order. You can imagine what it's like when it's lawless, like in the, in the wild, wild west when people could just walk into a bank and shoot up the ceiling and take off with everybody else's money and ride out on horses and then a posse followed, but rarely were they caught. And so there was really nothing to keep society in order, nothing to ensure confidence that if they placed the money in the bank that it would be there the next morning. And so it, it just made it so that people uh, didn't have the peace in their, in their lives that they've come to expect here in, on the streets of America in most cases, where they can pick up the phone, dial 911, and hold someone accountable. Yeah, because my next, my next thought was like, what happens when we see in societies where there is injustice? And I think you asked, or you answered that question already, how there is, there's really no, if there's no kind of law, there can't really be any justice to be able to, to serve those consequences of, of those people's actions. Um, just and, kind of, yeah. And I think if I can add to that, I think one of the principles that I really feel strongly about is the principle of accountability. So every person in our society should be accountable to keeping these rules that we call laws on the city, county, state, or federal level, right? Um, one of the areas that I think could use some fine tuning truly is that there's very little accountability for people that we put in positions to enforce our laws. So police officers, for example, um, uh, most of them are, are great, and I was very supportive of law enforcement when I was attorney general, and, and I think they do an, a great job for us in most cases, uh, but they, have, they enjoy what's called qualified immunity, which means they're immune, immune from a lot of things, but not all things that they might do. Prosecutors enjoy, by, by law, what's called absolute immunity, which means it's unqualified. If, if, if they make a charging decision for a wrong reason, there's very rarely a consequence or any way to hold a prosecutor accountable, which really, as a former prosecutor I, myself, I can say it doesn't, it doesn't ring true to me because e even though we need to protect those serious decisions that prosecutors make, if that power that we give them, which is the power to charge someone, a power basically to ruin their name or their lives, to force them into a system of, of defending themselves, a process of defending themselves at great expense, if they can make that decision without a consequence or without accountability, we've just entrusted the most powerful position in all of government to someone who's not accountable. And it can and is abused on occasion. And that should never happen. And when it does happen, it should be investigated and there should be a consequence. But that is not how our laws are currently written. So if there's one thing I could tweak about our criminal justice system, it would be to make sure and hold the power players, the prosecutors, investigators, and law enforcement more accountable than they are currently without compromising their ability to get the job done and, and show that when they are acting in good faith, they're protected because they need to be when they're acting in good faith. I'm just talking about those who on occasion decide that for political reasons, for the election, right, or for prejudicial reasons based on race or economic status or religious beliefs or other reasons are contaminating a process and making things unfair or unjust for people who are in our society. Yeah, because I feel like justice needs to go around to everyone and everything needs to be made fair. Right. So I really appreciate that perspective. And we should invest in those, those safeguards. 
one last question to kind of end off this podcast is is why why is justice why is the justice system why is the whole um, thought of justice why is it important personally to you well if if we don't have a system that protects people from bad actors, if we don't have a system that clearly defines what's acceptable, what's right and what's wrong, so that we have rules. I, I liken it to a bas basketball game. I, I shouldn't say this. My, my son is a little bit shorter than I am. He takes after my amazing wife, who's 5'2", buck, buck 10 or buck 5. Um, and so when we play basketball sometimes, and he's an adult now, but sometimes he gets a little rough and has to like hang on me because I'm 6'2". And, um, and it's very frustrating when someone is playing basketball and not following the rules. Now, he's an excellent outside shooter, and he's a good player. I'm not trying to disparage my own son, <laughs> who I love, who just finished dental school, um, and he's going to be a great dentist here in Utah. But when there are rules that you expect to play by and someone's not following those rules, even in fun, it gets frustrating. And it's the same way with our society. If, if we have laws and rules that we expect people to follow, that my property is my property, keep your hands off of it. Um, my kids or my, our, our children, don't abuse them, right? Don't confront them, don't yell at them, don't you know, question them. You know? Um, you know, my bank account is my bank account, so stay away from my money, right? If we don't have rules and then we don't enforce those rules, we have what's called chaos or unpredictability. And society just can't function. It just won't work like the machine it is with the invisible hand of, of Adam Smith and the, our free market economy. And if, if there aren't rules at play that protect and safeguard and provide consequences when those rules are abused, we have chaos. And we don't have a, a well, smooth functioning society and economy and predictability and all the things that our laws are designed to help us with. And so when we talk about justice, civil justice, criminal justice, we're talking about enforcing the rules that our society has made that keep us safe, things predictable, and that kind of grease the skids of, of everything that makes us prosper and free as Americans. And so justice is very important. We invest a lot of capital in our justice systems between judges, courts, corrections, prosecutors, defense attorneys, making sure we give everyone the constitutional liberties and rights that are guaranteed by our constitution, which was designed to help our government really operate in a way that lets everyone pursue their own dreams of happiness and, and prosperity, right? And so that all comes down to this system that provides a consequence when we don't follow the rules. And our job is to make sure they're, they're not only fair, but fairly applied to every person. That's justice. <laughs> because no one wants to play the game of life if other people are going to be breaking the rules. Right. Like, no one wants to play basketball <laughs> if people are running around the court, picking up the ball and running with it instead of <laughs> dribbling the ball. And that doesn't happen very often, right? But that's the rule book. And rules are important so that we have predictability and enjoyment for everyone. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Thank you all for tuning in with us today. Hopefully this episode was as uplifting and enlightening to you as it was for me. And that is Case Closed with John Swalwell.